The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Paul reviews some of his supposed credentials, which no longer have any bearing in comparison to the right relationship he has been given through the death of Christ. The power of Christ's resurrection motivates him to press on toward the ultimate goal, eternal life with Christ. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his supper sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made, has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies beyond, behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. gospel comes to us from Matthew 21, the holy gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable to the religious leaders who are plotting his death, revealing that their plans will ironically bring about the fulfillment of scripture. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the hare. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to them, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized 
that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. So this morning, we're switching gears. and We're, we're going to go with the, the p- passage from Paul in Philippians. So this year, I became the proud owner of, of two chairs. Uh, these aren't just any chairs, but a specific brand of reclining, pillow-topped, footrest-built-in type of chairs. Uh, these chairs are from the, one of the most recognized companies of best-selling chairs in the nation. Uh, can you guess what kind of chairs I got? That's right, Lazy Boy Recliner Chairs. Uh, Lazy Boy Chairs are the proud sponsors of Saturday Dad Naps Everywhere. These chairs insulate and surround us in pillowy comfort. And, and sometimes they even come with cup holders. The theologian Karl Barth uh, once said that comfort is one of the great siren calls of our age. We seek out ways to make our our house comfortable and our sleep comfortable. We want to make sure that we have comfortable retirements. And we rest easier when our doors are locked at night. Now, there's nothing wrong with relaxing or, or taking our Sabbath seriously. But occasionally, we find that we are staying in our comfort zone. And we can get protective of it. And maintaining it can almost become the center tentpole of our lives. But people occasionally interrupt that uh, comfort zone, don't they? My my daughters wake me up from uh, my dad naps (laughs) all the time. But if we really consider our comfort zones, we see that we are often made uncomfortable by other people. Other people are messy and real and do unpredictable things. And if we're being honest, we don't want to engage them. So sometimes it's easier to engage uh, at a distance that we're comfortable with, in control of. And there's many beautiful ways to, to engage at a distance. Uh, we're certainly learning that right now. Our world has so many opportunities, so many needs. Uh, we can send shoeboxes of Christmas joy to the other side of the world. Or, or we can purchase goats or chickens for a family in another country. Or we can write a check to support the ongoing mission of a church. However, sometimes we give what's easy for us to give while limiting offering what is uncomfortable for us to give. And to be honest, in our heart of hearts, I think many of us, and myself included, long to be swept out of our our lazy boys and past those limits. We want to engage in new ways to, to join a larger adventure. There is a pattern in the Bible of people being called to leave a former life. And as they are called, they're called to risk something by leaping into the unknown. Moses, Daniel, David, Abraham, almost anyone of note in the Bible is called to risk something. None of the apostles got to do their ministry by staying in their backyard or or parked in their lazy boys. So, So this week, we're going to focus on a passage where Paul describes his personal pivot from Pharisee to Christian. He states it here this way. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. And more than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, Paul's original life was comfortable. He was educated, pedigreed, righteous. He wasn't just a religious person. He had actively persecuted the people that had threatened his faith, his his comfort zone. But then he had an encounter with Jesus that left him blind and helpless 
on the Damascus Road. He had to rely on the very people that he had persecuted for help. And at the end of the encounter, he has a choice to make. He could either continue to follow Jesus or or return the things that had given him identity, safety, and community. This is not a choice unique to Paul. Following Jesus often leads us out of our comfort zone. Following something often means leaving something behind. Maybe, Maybe COVID has you hunkered down. Maybe you're secure in your friend group and and God is calling you to reach out to that person who's on the the fringe of your friend group. Maybe you give financially, but you're starting to sense that God is calling you to find a cause that stirs your heart. Or, Or maybe it's a sin problem. Many times following Jesus into a deeper, more mature discipleship means getting help with an addiction, a relationship, or, or even a habit. Paul was invited to leave behind his religious comfort zone. His, his identity, his community, his safety was all gone within one decision to embrace Jesus. Sometimes the, thing, the things that we stand on as our foundation, our, our religion our tax bracket, our nest egg, or, our, or even our niceness may be getting in the way of the life that God has for you. This morning, I can't, I can't tell you where God might be challenging you to grow. However, I can say that God doesn't let his people stay stagnant, stay still. We are designed to grow, even during a pandemic. Now, we're not Paul. And Paul's life, if you read it in the Bible, is terrifying. He wrote the letter of Philippians after being imprisoned for preaching his new belief in Jesus. And I'm not not sure I'd be penning phrases like count it all joy from prison where Paul is writing his letter. I I might be saying, get me out of here, or this is really stressful. But Paul doesn't say any of these kinds of things in his letters. Instead, we find words of thanksgiving and praise. Paul writes, for his sake, I've suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Fascinatingly, uh, what comes out of Paul's decision to leave behind all the things he relied on for safety and identity is a deep connection, a deep connection with the the new churches he planted, a, a growth in his trust in God, and this sense that Christ was with him. I love this. God supports us. As we step out of our comfort zone, God God doesn't leave us to do this on our own. You see, the, the beauty in following God is that God doesn't point us in a direction and, and just send us off. The beauty in following God is that God leads. King David uh, wrote a psalm that says this, Psalm 1833. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. Here's what I love about it. What I love is that David doesn't wish for God to make his path easy or, or closer to the ground, but instead he thanks God for giving him the right kind of feet for the path God is calling him to. If God puts you on a high path, then, then God gives you like deer feet. But first, we have to take that first step. Faith requires a jump, a leap. We have to leave the the safety of the rock behind. Now, your your leap of faith probably won't look like uh, bungee jumping or skydiving in a a squirrel suit, but it it might require you to be uncomfortable to follow God. By grace, Paul was given the, the truer joy despite the discomfort He was given that that truer joy he found in his purpose and his calling through his relationship with Jesus. As you sit here today, take a moment to 
to reflect internally. What ways to love others have you been considering that that feels like a stretch? Like who's been on your mind lately? What is stopping you from really looking at what God is calling you to engage? Is it busyness? Is it fear or worry for the future? Is it the chaos of the world around you? This morning, what if, what if God is inviting you to an adventure? The adventure of following him right now. I want you to take a, a moment and, and dream. Play your story forward a little. What could happen if you engaged that discomfort, that, that people group, that difficult neighbor? What if you joined that discussion group or, or talked to that person or gave money to a cause that has been stirring in you? What could happen? Remember, God supports us as we step out of our comfort zone. God does not leave us or forsake us. God gives us, God gives us the feet we need for the path he is calling us to run on. I wonder... I wonder what God is calling St. Mark's to do. Like many churches, we've been most definitely shoved out of our comfort zone with with how we do worship and and how we gather. But what if God is calling us to engage that discomfort and, and make the holiday season the safest and the most approachable ever for for our community that doesn't feel safe gathering in large numbers yet? I keep wondering uh, if what God is doing right here meets the needs of our community in the parking lot and in line. How can we be invitational with what God has given us here at St. Mark's? Uh, this space, this amazing pile of people that make worship happen. Uh, what, if, what if we made this parking lot service a sanctuary, not only for the people that already gather, but the people that aren't here yet, people in our community that are needing to be with each other safely and receive hope from God's word. What if we made this upcoming Christmas all about our community and made the best parking lot holiday season we could possibly do? I have have the start of a vision in my head I see every bush and tree decorated to the absolute hilt. I see a table filled with hot chocolate, coffee, and and baked goods. I hear carols being sung loudly, socially distanced, of course, but sung loudly because we're outside. And I, I see church happening in a new way for us and for people in need. I don't know what the the completion of this vision looks like, but I do know that God is moving and active in each and every one of our lives, calling us to the adventure of following him. No story was ever written where the protagonist refused to engage in the plot. In every story we've ever ingested, there's this moment where the character had to decide to to leave the humdrum behind and live into a new adventure. We have to get out of the lazy boy and onto the path, out of our our comfort zone and into God's comfort zone. And we know that God empowers us as Christians with that ability to do that. God promises that there is work for us to do. But all of us need to consider, like Paul, Paul, What might be holding us back from crossing the threshold of the story and and entering in? Paul had large blockages, and, and, and maybe you do as well. But large or small, God promises to give us what we need to live the story written for us. Amen.
Gospels this morning in the parking lot and online, we are doing the blessing of the pets. So uh, if at home you have a pet, <laughs> uh, bring it in front of the, the screen, the computer or the TV, and let's let's bless all of these wonderful pets together. I'm going to read the liturgy and uh, you can read along with uh, and, and bless your pets as we go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you holy angels. Praise the Lord, all heavenly host. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens as you uh, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, obeying God's will. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Young men and uh, women, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is exalted and the splendor of the Lord is over the earth and heaven. Hallelujah. God created you and declared you good. God gave you to us to share our life as faithful companion and friend. May God bless you with a life of joy, curiosity, interest, enthusiasm, and a life of blessing to all those whose lives you touch through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Maker and master of all that lives, your animals provide us with food and clothing, guidance and rescue, recreation and companionship, and so much more. Bless us through these, our friends, whom you have entrusted to us, for you have made us your partners in caring for them and for all the animals that live in the skies, the earth, and the sea. Help us to see your power and wisdom in the variety of creatures that live in our world and hear our prayer for all that suffer, overwork, hunger, ill treatment. Protect your creatures and guard them from all evil now and forever. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, we have some announcements this morning. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone is getting the updates from St. Mark's via email. Uh, some people have mentioned that uh, emails are going to their promotions box in Gmail. So our web team made a quick 20 second tutorial on how to make sure that our emails are coming to your regular box so you can stay in the know. Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial on how to get um email out of the promotions box uh, for St. Mark's. You're going to put in your search bar pastor at St. Mark's Lutheran.us. It should pop right up. You'll click on the sprocket and go to see all settings, then go to filters and blocked addresses. Uh, then you're going to scroll down to create a new filter. Uh, paste in uh, the email address that you copied earlier. Uh, hit create filter. Uh, and then you go down to uh, where it says categorize on the bottom left there and you'll choose a category called primary and you'll create the filter and then uh, all emails from that point forward will go to your inbox. We have a congregational meeting coming up on the final Sunday of October via Zoom at 11 p.m. This will include voting on the proposed 2021 budget which is currently posted at the church. If you would like a copy to review ahead of time, please message Don Fontana or Wayne Voss, and please plan to join us on the 25th. Don't forget that we are always here to pray for you. If you have a prayer request, you can always use our form on the website to send it to our prayer team. We would love to lift you and your concerns up in prayer. For those of us who call St. Mark's home, and for anyone who'd like to support the work and care that we do here, we'd love for you to be able to tithe as a way of giving back a portion of what God gives us in worship. As COVID makes this practice harder, we want to remind all that uh, we have a few ways of giving. Uh, a check mailed to the church, a regular withdrawal set up through Simply Giving, this is the, the easiest if you're a long-term member who'd like to have a tax statement at the end of the year. And you can also now give online through our website through Donation Box. We'd like to remind you that Donation Box does charge an admin fee, which you can choose to cover or allow the church to. Thank you for the support that you provide to St. Mark's. Uh, we have an upcoming Taze service the third Thursday. Uh, look for that on Facebook and our Nature Walk on Sunday, October 24th. Uh, the location will be announced for that. We have a special event coming up Thursday, October 8th at 4 p.m. for middle schoolers and high schoolers. We're going to meet at Kroll's Farm at 4 p.m. Uh, to pet some goats and run around the corn maze and, and explore their awesome harvest farm. The entrance fee is graciously covered by Kroll's Farm, but uh, bring extra money to buy a pumpkin or Halloween decorations. We can't wait to see you middle schooler and high schoolers there. All this information and more is in the October Messenger, which you can find in your email or posted on our website. Now for our blessing, the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. That's a good one.